Hello, everyone. You are listening to the latest Flyers Talk podcast. I am Jordan Hall, and as always, I am joined by the wonderful Brooke Destra. Brooke, <laughs> it's always about goalies in Philadelphia, right? It's always yeah. about goalies. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about the goalie situation right now for the Flyers, some recent news regarding a couple of goalie prospects. And we're also going to look at the potential contract for Morgan Frost, who is the last restricted free agent uh, that needs a deal, a new deal before training camp starts, Brooke. But let's get into the goalies. We'll start with Samuel Erson. He signed a two-year contract extension 10 days ago. Uh, $1.45 million average annual value for Erson. So he, the Flyers now have him locked up for the next three years. Uh, he'll, have, he'll have the final year of his ELC this season, and then that new extension will kick in the following year. Brooke, why do you think the Flyers did it now, and do you like that they took a little bit of a risk on him and got him done before, really, he's ever played a full season? I'm glad, okay. personally. Um, I think Arison really came out – I mean, I forget that first game he played. I want to say it was against Carolina. His first – his – Intro to the NHL was, was scary. Yeah. And then he really kind of found himself. And I want to give him a lot of credit uh, jumping into <laughs> the situation that he did last year. And I clearly the Flyers are really high on him. They want him to be around. And it, it kind of makes you wonder what's going to go on with the whole Carter Hart situation in Canada and that whole shebang like yeah. maybe they're they're wondering okay like maybe we really need to have this backup ready to go in case <laughs> he, he's not a backup he's he's the guy, he's the guy. um but even still i think that Arison um deserves the extension i think he's a hard worker uh he's a good player he's a good locker room guy and you know whether the opportunity comes where he is that he's the go-to or he's the backup. I think he's he's going to do solid work. You can't ask more for that. And I think with the Flyers trusting him with this opportunity before they needed to give him the contract, it's like, hey, we trust you. We like you. Here's some money. Yeah. And hopefully he'll live up to those expectations that the Flyers and fans are really going to set for him. Yeah, I think one thing everyone really knows is that you can't really predict how things go, especially in net. I mean, it's the most important position in the game. And I think the Flyers learned you can never have enough goalies back in 2018, 19, when they used eight. the carousel, they of had goal eight tenders. goalies. And that proved uh, that, yeah, you, you always need depth at that position. And I, I feel like they have a, a good grasp on what Samuel Erickson can do, uh, how good he can be. John Tortorella really liked him. I believe the people that work closely with Erickson like him, like Kim Delaball, the, the team's goalie coach. Uh, so I think they have faith in him. And the fact is, uh, if they need him a lot this season, he plays, he does really well. Perhaps he ups his value a ton. Uh, so now you get him perhaps maybe a little cheaper and, and you don't have to worry about re-signing him after, after this season. I really don't think it has a ton to do with Carter Hart and and the sexual assault uh, allegations that are uh, that Hockey Canada is dealing with in mm -hmm. the NHL right now. That going back to May, uh, they they announced that they were going to have their own private investigation into that World Junior team, uh, the 2018 World Junior uh, Canadian team. Carter Hart was on that team, and uh, people are wondering if that uh, you know there's some some sanctions are going to come out from the league for, for players that played on that team. Uh, we have no idea if Carter Hart was involved at oh, all. No idea at all. It's, um, you know, but he was on that team and, and there could be some players that played on that 2018 Canadian world junior team that were um, accused of sexual assault by this young woman uh, that could face penalty. And uh, so we'll see where that goes. And if the, if the Erickson signing had anything to do with it, uh, I'm not sure if it does. I think if anything, they just wanted Erickson under, under team control, they figure why not get it done now? And you really can never have too many goalies. Um, and the reality to me, Brooke, is also they're in a rebuild. And it's possible that they eventually want to move Carter Hart. Um, it's Which is a crazy to thing to even talk about because back at the year where we had the carousel goaltenders, yeah. everyone was like, Carter Hart is here. He had 
a great start that he went on like the six, seven game winning streak right into the league. And everyone's like, this is the guy. This is, we finally have goaltending since Ron Hextall. Like mm -hmm. this is so exciting. And now a couple years later, we're like, oh, he may be a trade candidate. He may be a trade chip. And you know, that is what comes with a rebuild, but it is crazy that again, here we are. What? not locked into a goaltending situation again. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's crazy to me. It really is. Um, but you look at Arison's contract and, you know, he comes out swinging. He's everything you could hope for and more. The contract looks like a steal. If he's, you know, subpar and he's, you know, a standard kind of durability throw in kind of a rotational goaltender every now and then, People are like, okay, it's it's a really minimal contract. So either way, it's you're it's a win-win. I think they did it strategically at this time for that reason. Um, who knows, Jordan Hall? Yeah, who knows? It, 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 you never know. Exactly. I never know. No, I think that's that, that's case in point is with uh, with in the situation that you can never predict how things go during the season. So, I mean, Sam Erickson could spend the majority of the year in Lehigh, or he could play a lot of games up here. Um, and to be clear, when I said the league uh, started its investigation into the sexual assault allegations against the World Junior team, that was May 2022. So it's been over a year now that they've had this investigation, and there's some buzz or some rumors or some reports that they could, uh, you know, release what they found in that investigation before the season starts. Uh but we'll see. Uh, there's no timetable, I think, for when they're going to announce nope. uh, what they found in that investigation. It's lots so it's of, kind of stirring, yeah. but there's no, here's a definitive date. Here's right. when we're going to release stuff. So it's like, please just release it when you know it instead of be, like building it up, you know? Yeah. It's just let, let it be. When I think the league is not going to rush – uh, that investigation, I think they're just going to do it right. <laughs> like they need to. Oh, absolutely. It's a private investigation. Um, but uh, and, and Carter Hart throughout the year at the before the season, he said he would like to to talk about that. But he said he can't. He has to let the legal process play out. And he said that at the end of the season uh, as well in April. Um, so we'll wait and see on that. Uh, but the Flyers do get Arison under contract uh, for the next two seasons. Uh, now three years total. Um, and I think they they have some faith that he can be a quality goalie for them. Brooke, another element to look at in net is Ivan Fedotov. Uh, a bizarre situation, as we all know. What else is new with this team? Yes. It's never easy. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it's never easy. It is not. This is a real convoluted situation with Fedotov that goes back to when he signed his entry-level contract in May 2022. One of the top goalies in Russia, Flyers were looking like he – we're, we're hoping that he could actually compete for their backup job last year. And then he never plays hockey last season because of course of <laughs> required service to the Ru Russian military. So Fedotov did not play hockey last season. He, he served in the Russian military. He's now ready to play hockey again this year. Um, there's his contract moved the ALC that was supposed to be in place last year, last season. They haven't moved to this season, but, this all season, he signed a deal to play in the KHL for his for his KHL team. And now there's confusion of, well, is he going to play in the KHL or is he going to um, be faithful to his deal that he had with the Flyers? Long story short, this week, the International Ice Hockey Federation ruled in favor of the Flyers. They said he does have a valid contract with the Flyers. Uh, as a result, Fedotov faces a four-month sus suspension in the KHL. If he stays in the KHL... Right now, he will not be able to play for four months. Uh, but it looks like his KHL club is going to fight this. They they are not happy. They released a statement saying they don't agree with the ruling by the International Ice Hockey Federation. Uh, and they believe he's going to play for them this year in the KHL. And they hope he can play in the season <laughs> opener for them. So a lot of gray area, a lot of unknowns. It still sounds almost unlikely that Fedotov is going to come over here. Brooke, how do you feel about that? Do you feel like Fedotov no longer fits here? He's 26 years old. Um, he still has that one-year deal with the Flyers. And the Flyers do have a lot going on. It's it's a crowded goalie room now uh, for them. How do you feel about it all? Yeah, it's, it's interesting because, frankly, I personally wouldn't want his first pro season 
here with the Flyers to be after a season of not playing at all. I think that there is a lot of rust that you need to shake off, especially goaltending position. You know, you, I'm sure he stayed in shape. He did his routines like that whole, you know, this, that and the other. But when it comes down to it, you need games to shake the rust off. And it's been a while since he's played. Now, it's it's an interesting situation if he were to stay in the KHL, like you said, four months suspension. I mean, you don't know. Things might change from now to when it's set in stone. But, <sighs> Jesus. <laughs> I just feel like... Every time we have any kind of discussion about almost any single player on this team or within the franchise, it's never two plus two equals four. It's <laughs> there's, it's never simple anymore. Yeah. And it kind of <laughs> drives you nuts. Well, like, I just wish I could be like, yeah, he played last season. He's great. He's got a valid contract with the yeah. Flyers. Now they're bringing him to Philly, you know, Whip out the cheese steaks. Welcome, yep. welcome, Fedotov. <laughs> it's just not like that. I need a simple situation, please. Well, if if we can defend our point of you never know with That's... Flyers goalies, this is case in point. I mean, the Flyers last summer were thinking this guy's really good. He's finally coming over here. He's going to be our potentially our backup, and then suddenly he doesn't even play hockey and he's serving in the Russian military. So. I think that is maybe the overall theme here is that you can never have enough goalies and um, you have to plan for um, the unknown. <laughs> and uh, A new slogan for the podcast. Yeah, you never know. You never know. <laughs> I remember when it came out that Fedotov it was starting to look like Fedotov was actually going to have to really serve in the Russian military. It was, I think, like late June, early July. And I remember it vividly because Faraby – suddenly had to under, undergo his neck surgery and that came out of nowhere and i'm like man it is it is june july and one of the best players in the organization uh young promising player is getting an artificial disc put in his neck and a goalie prospect is now going to war um in russia it was just like because of course yes it was just <laughs> and that that is when it, of course. honestly i couldn't help but just think like wow like you just Never a dull day here for sure, but I felt for Ivan Fedotov. That was a, you know, a, I can only imagine what he went through last year. Truly, oh yeah. Here he is thinking he's thinking he's realizing his NHL dream. He was a seventh round pick in 2015, so I mean, this was a long time coming. This kid really developed, and suddenly he's one of the best goalies in the KHL. He goes to the Olympics, he wins a silver medal, and he's uh, and he stands out for Russia. And he's thinking he's he's right there on the cusp of reaching the NHL, and then suddenly. Things happen the way they did. Uh, if you're confused at all by this, you can go to our website and you can read about it. We just recently wrote about Fedotov and the situation right now and what he went through last year and where things are now. Brooke, I'm a believer in I don't think at all about, oh, does he fit anymore? Like, again, get him over. If he, want, if he can come over here and that contract is valid and he wants to come over and eventually the KHL team that he plays for, CSKA, Moscow allows him to come over here. You take him. Uh, I don't care that he didn't play for a year. There's a chance, you know, you could have him play in Lehigh Valley. You okay. can have him shake off Rust. Um, this guy's a decent player, and he has a contract. Uh, if I think the Flyers, if they, if they can get him over here, they're not thinking, eh, does he no longer fit? Uh, I learned in 2018-19 that you truly can never have enough goalies. Um, so I think you make him fit. If he comes, if he can come here for training camp and – and uh, it would be it would be interesting to see him over right here for training camp. Right. I understand his age. He's 26. I believe he turns 27 in December. I think some point in the middle of the year. I get he's he's growing up and he's no longer a kid anymore. But again, if you get him over here, uh, he's one of your prospects and he's good. Uh, get him here. See what he can do. You can never have enough goalies. The Flyers have learned that the hard way. Uh, so that's where I stand. Uh, but do I know where he's going to play? I do not. You never know. You never know. <laughs> the, the situation over there looks so dicey. I mean, like just yesterday, you're seeing that the uh, IIHF ruled in the Flyers' favor, and you're like, "Oh, wow, he might come over." And then suddenly, his KHL team's like, "No, <laughs> he's still ours." Yes, we disagree with that, <laughs> and we believe he's going to play here. We're fully confident he's going to play in the KHL. So, 
uh, it's just a really great area situation uh, that I think is truly a wait and see. Uh, we'll see where it goes. I think it's one of those uh, – definitely stay tuned. Uh, the good thing for the Flyers is I think they have a decent situation in net right now. It's not like they were banking on Fedotov oh, no. on being a backup this year. Um, they have Cal Peterson. They have Phil Sandstrom, Erickson, Carter Hart. Uh, I think this is a really pivotal year for Sandstrom. Yeah. I do. Yeah, he'll be a UFA after this year. Mm-hmm. So I think his future in the NHL is really in the air here. I, I think he needs to prove himself if he wants to get another deal after this. Um, Because obviously, you know, he is a Swedish goalie that sometimes guys, if they don't fit in the NHL, they eventually go maybe back home and they mm-hmm. play in the Swedish Elite League and have a very nice career over there. But he is a guy that I think is starting to fight it a little bit in terms of Goalies are coming up, and they're drafting guys, and Erickson's kind of solidified himself. They get Cal Peterson in the trade for Provorov, so now he's, I think, really fighting the mm-hmm. the competition here. You know who I miss? Who's that? Alex Lyon. Alex Lyon. I yes. miss Alex Lyon. Very happy for him with his run in Florida, Yeah, but I miss him in the organization. Yeah. I do, and I'm glad that he had the opportunity and the run that he did I wish it was with the Flyers, but I'm glad that he got that elsewhere. I covered him significantly in Lehigh Valley. Um, And then, you know, his transition to the Flyers every now and then. And I I miss him. (laughs) He he was always there. He was always reliable for the fandoms. I remember when uh, the Flyers and the Lion officially kind of part of ways in free agency. Um, I was looking back and I was like, wow, he I think he was in Lehigh for like five seasons. Mm -hmm. I mean. You know, he played there a long time. It Good, was pretty reliable, durable. Yeah. durable. Glad he got to experience winning. <laughs> yeah. I mean, really uh, took everyone's surprise with the Panthers when he got his opportunity. And he mm-hmm. just kept himself in net by continuing to play well as they pushed for the playoffs, mm-hmm. got in and ended up racing all the way to the Stanley Cup final. Good for him. Good for you, Alex Lyon. <laughs> Catch all the sports action and more at Rivers Casino, Philadelphia. Whether it's the money line or the pass line, there's something for everyone, including a great sports book. Rivers Casino, Philadelphia. Philly loves a winner. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. All right, Brooke. Well, we're going to shift from goalie talk and all the goalie craziness (laughs) to Morgan Frost. We're no longer talking net. We're talking centers and a guy that still needs a contract. Really... Did a nice job on that prove-it deal. I mean, he started slow last season, Brooke, but he was one of the best players on the team. When the calendar flipped to 2023, he led the team in scoring from January 1st. And I thought, in my mind, really answered the bell uh, in many, many ways. Still waiting for that contract. What do you think it could be for Frost, Brooke? How many years and maybe how much money? What are you thinking? It's Now, this is interesting, and all contracts, discussions are you know interesting (laughs) is the word when you're talking about rebuild because do you want to lock these longer guys up long term do you want to give them another short contract see where they are when they're finally a contender and then really offer them that to keep them around for a significant stretch of time it's it's interesting um like you said, he's coming off of a prove it deal. He had the one year eight hundred thousand dollar contract. Um, I feel like it's going to be some sort of middle term contract deal. Now I don't know if we're going to go like like a five by four, or it could be. I, I see maybe like. <laughs> I it's I don't see them locking him up like in a sort of. Sanheim deal. I don't think anyone's going closer to 10 years yeah. on a contract anytime soon. Um, I can see locking him up for a four or five year range at honestly, probably four or five mil. And I, I kind of go off of, you know, maybe not even connect contract. Like when he signed his six by six, I don't I, it's it's an interesting one because I genuinely don't know which route they're going to take in terms of locking him up. I don't think that they want to part with him at all. Yeah. I think that they do see Frost as a key piece to this future and the organization and I do as well. 
I'm just curious to see if they want to go down that route of locking him in. Yeah. Or here's, oh, you know, a couple years and then we'll renegotiate when time is around. I don't, I don't, it, <laughs> it's, I don't, it, the theme of this podcast is I, I don't, don't know. know. <laughs> it's I don't know. No, that is okay. This, this I is don't one of the more, know. I think <laughs> restricted free agents than their contracts. One of the more difficult things to predict. Um, you know, you have a scenario with Joel Faraby where he comes out and has that really big year and the Flyers commit long term to him. They get him locked up for, I believe it was five years, right? I think it's Faraby, I believe it was a five year. Let me look it up real quick. Six years, excuse me, six years, $30 million deal. I don't think the Flyers, personally, I don't think the Flyers are ready to commit to Morgan Frost long term yet. I think they want to see a little mm-hmm. bit more. My best guess would be they will actually go somewhere in the two-year range. And that, I believe, will keep him a restricted free agent, which could be really valuable to a, to the team. Yeah. Uh, they'll, you know, he won't hit on restricted free agency yet. Um, so he'll be a restricted free agent when that deal expires. And I think Frost's camp is probably looking something kind of comparable to Noah Cates' deal. Um, Noah Cates got two years, and he has a 2.6 two five average annual value. I think they'll be able to argue that Frost should get a little more than that. Mm-hmm. Frost did lead the team in even strength scoring. He led the team in scoring period from January 1st on. So he was one of the top the team's top offensive playmakers. He's not coming off his ELC. He's coming off a one year prove it deal. So he already did kind of a prove it type of deal. So I think they could argue that whole makes somewhere in the this is just my guess, the 2.7, 2.8 million range. Um, that way Frost is betting on himself again. Um, the Flyers will like that he can be a restricted free agent when it's all done, but the Frost cam can argue that he should get somewhere more than Noah Cates, um, kind of be just under Scott Lawton who makes 3 million a year, but he'll be one of the more, um, higher paid forwards. If you look at their, uh, if you look at their depth chart here, Cam Atkinson, Sean, uh, Sean Couture, they make a lot of money, obviously, still when they're back on um, and not um, broken on injured reserve. Yeah, <laughs> when they're back on the books, essentially. Uh, so that's my guess. I- I'm thinking somewhere in the two year range, 2.7, 2.8 million range. Uh, but it would not surprise me if they maybe go three to four years. And I wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me if the Frost camp wants more long term security. Maybe they want. Maybe they feel like Morgan Frost proved it on that one-year deal, and he should get more in the three- to four-year range. But that's my guess. Your guess is as good as mine. Yeah. I- <laughs> <laughs> and I, and, and I, think, I think the Frost camp has a lot, of, uh, a lot of good things that they can use in the negotiations, is that um, he was one of the best scorers on the team. I mean, led the oh, team yeah. in even strength scoring. Uh, that's impressive. The argument is there. Yeah. It is. And I feel like – it could be one of those situations where they announce the contract and we're going to be like, huh, okay, sure. Yeah. But then look at it and validate it. Like whatever, I, you know, Danny Briere is not going to be throwing out money just to throw it out mainly because we don't have a lot of it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but so far I think he's been doing a really great job in terms of his first off season and, they're not going to go into anything without, you know, extensively talking with Frost's camp, talking with, you know, all the guys in the front office and solidifying a deal that makes both sides happy. And at the end of the day, if everyone is happy, then I am happy and we can <laughs> well, play hockey. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, Brooke, I'll ask you, <laughs> Brooke, I will ask you this. Do you think Frost proved enough last year that he's a foundation piece and that they should go long term and lock him up? Or do you think in your mind he has another gear to get to and he needs to prove more before they say this guy's our future? I do think he has another level he's able to reach that he hasn't attained yet. Um, I, I feel like people have been talking about Frost since he was drafted. And I mean, it's, it's the truth. He was one of the most well-regarded prospects in the organization. And then he made a shift to the Phantoms and then he moved up to the Flyers and everyone was like, he's here. Frost is here. And everyone was so excited. And it, it took him a little bit. It did 
to adjust because you know he wasn't going to put up 120 point seasons like he was doing in the OHL but that's you know not many people do that in the NHL anyways so it's fine if your name's not Connor McDavid you're you know (laughs) whatever (laughs) um I do think he can reach another level I feel like it would be optimal really to maybe go on one of those shorter term deals and be like okay two three years couple mil and then be like, okay, we are riding high. This team is sturdy. We can make a playoff push now. I want six, seven mil, however long. And they're going to be like, you've earned it. Here you go. Silver platter. Yeah. yeah right, right. I, so who who knows? I yeah. Who knows? Well, this is the stuff we talk about in August is uh, what will Morgan Frost get on his new contract? It's almost been like. The at biggest this storyline right now. At this rate, month. it's just shake a magic eight ball. Yeah. And it's going to say ask again later. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. like, that's how I feel because yeah. I <laughs> I don't know. And, Can you tell? I'm all over the place yes, today. It's okay. It's, it's, okay. it's a chaotic Tuesday. Yes. Truly uh, a slow <laughs> a slow part of summer. The dog days of summer. Um, but it's, pro- it's, it's one of the bigger storylines right now in Flyers land uh, is what will Morgan Frost get. Uh, we will see. Um, I think the Flyers in-house are fighting whether uh, Frost's game from January 1st on was a sample size or that's, you know, a guy that they can they can bank on for a full season. Mm-hmm. Because as everyone knows, Frost was very quiet before the calendar turned to 2023 and then he turned it on. So you have to really wonder if like, can he do that in a full season or was that I, I a think just, was it a spurt? You need a full, you need a full season. And I think they want to see yeah. him do it again. In a full season, uh, I think you know, he will. Yeah, I do. I think I'm, not, I'm not there. discrediting anything. I think that this is just a really pivotal year for him, and I think that you're going to have. I mean, I've I've said it a, in an abundance at this point. I think Konechny is going to lead the team in points, but I think Frost, if he comes out swinging like he did at the turn of the calendar year, he's going to be like knocking on the door right behind TK, and that's a good thing. Yeah. It's a wonderful thing. Points. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but. Um... And I, I think, as I alluded to, I think the Frost camp has a lot of ammo to use here. Uh, people can't discredit Frost just because he was really good from January 1st on. I mean, that, right. was a, that was a time where everyone was like, hey, youth, show us what you got, kids. And he said, Frost, here I am. To Frost's credit, he played very well. He put up points, which is what people wanted from him. Put up points, put mm-hmm. up some crooked numbers. He did that. Uh, And to lead the team in even strength scoring in his first full season in the NHL, I think is a nice feather in his cap. And one thing I think uh, his camp will use in negotiations. Uh, So my guess, maybe two years, 2.7, 2.8 million. Maybe they get in that 3 million range uh, or maybe they go longer term and, and we're looking at a different AAV, but it's, it's all predicting and guessing right now. Magic eight ball. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> we will see where it goes here. <laughs> Brooke will keep that magic eight ball in her hand. Uh, so you invisible. Ask, yes. <laughs> but uh, long story short, I think the Flyers will get it done before training camp. I, uh, yeah. I'm not really worried about that. I don't think it's going to be like a Travis connect me thing where it went three days in and they finally got it done and he wasn't there. I, I, I think Morgan Frost will be on the ice day one of camp and he'll have a, he'll have a contract and we'll see what it is. But Brooke. Yep. Funny- <laughs> Fun chatting with you. As always, good seeing you. Always uh, good to cover things in August. We're going to continue to cover things in August. And uh, as we get to closer. To the best of our ability. To the best of our ability. As we get closer to this September training camp. Uh, before you know it, the weather's going to be changing a little bit. And uh, we'll be at Flyers Training Center. I'm ready yes. for crispy leaves. Yes. And cold air. <laughs> there we go. And be in ringside. There we go. I am tired of the heat. Yes. <laughs> Goodbye, summer. It is hot. <laughs> well, Brooke, thank you so much. As always, great seeing you. Great chatting with you. A big thank you to Ben Berry, our podcast producer and guru. And Flyers fans, of course, as always, thank you so much. We were live at Rivers Casino, Philadelphia. Come check it out here. Plenty of sports to watch and plenty of things to do down here. And thank you so much for listening to the latest Flyers Talk podcast. Wherever you get your podcast, please rate and listen. And we can't wait to talk to you next time. Thank <laughs> you.